Call of the Dead is a unique map. One of a kind, actually. No other Black Ops Zombies map really plays quite like it. And you'll notice this if you look at Call of the Dead's record history compared to all the other Black Ops 1 maps. It's by far the lowest. In fact, even Round 100 was considered impossible to reach on Call of the Dead until this year. No, stop looking at that Claymore camo, look at the round number. It took almost 13 years, but players finally broke the barrier on Call of the Dead, achieving the first ever solo round 100. And they did it by not killing zombies? Hang on, let me explain how one of the most insane strategies in zombies was discovered on Call of the Dead over a decade after its release. To understand the map, we're first going to need to talk about how Call of the Dead has traditionally been played since it came out on May 3rd, 2011. Call of the Dead has two problems that differentiate it from other maps. No traps and terrible wonder weapons. This essentially makes it like the survival map of Black Ops 1, most similar to Town or Nuketown. Sure, you can get a ray gun, a scavenger, and a rocket launcher like the M72 Law, but these start dropping off in damage not long after round 50, and when by round 68, every single zombie has more health than the George Romero boss, it starts getting a little hard to kill them. Map features like the Flinger only make the zombies respawn, and PhD drops off long before even the ray gun does. By doing the Easter egg, you can get a Wonder Waff as a death machine drop whenever you kill George, but this only kills a max of 180 zombies, and since it's a drop, you need something else in between the times you get it to progress the round. The VR-11 is the only tool on the map that deals infinite damage, and it only kills one zombie per shot. So you can only kill 36 zombies, 12 with the unpack-a-punched version and 24 with the packed, before you have to run all over the map trading it out and getting a new one. To give you an idea of how tedious this is, on round 80 alone there are 600 zombies, meaning you would have to trade out the VR-11 up to 16 times with no drops to kill the entire round. And then you have to worry about box error, which is an issue on Black Ops 1 when you hit the mystery box a few thousand times too many, and the game just crashes. So basically, everything on Call of the Dead is working against you, just how George Romero would have wanted. Now, you may have seen Round 100 on Call of the Dead in co-op. In fact, the two-player world record for the map is way up at 128 by Zamba and Eggman. This is because the VR-11 has a feature that only works in co-op, where you can shoot your teammate with the pack-a-punched version, and it will give them insta-kill for about 10 seconds. As you can imagine, this speeds things up a lot, but unfortunately, the game doesn't allow you to turn the weapon on yourself and give yourself a face full of insta-kill on solo, so solo on the map is much more bare bones. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire world record history of Call of the Dead in this video, but I will give you an idea of how the strategy has developed over time. At first, players would train in the most open area, the beach outside the lighthouse, and use the ray gun and scavenger on full hordes of zombies. Then they'd switch to VR-11 only when those guns were no longer useful. Two problems began to arise though, box error and console frame lag from hitting the box too much during VR11 trades. In 2013, the record began to plateau in the low 80s, and stayed around there for a while due to few developments in the strategy. However, in 2016, players began to come up with ideas to solve these two problems. By this time, many of the Black Ops 1 players had switched to playing on PC, where there was no frame lag, and they had figured out how to extend the box error as well. Since the number of box hits was clearly limited before the crash, at 3,700 total hits to be specific, players figured they could reach a higher round by hitting the box less in the early rounds, when other methods besides the VR-11 could still kill. The easiest way to do this was PhD flopping. Since this was an active ability from a perk, it used no ammo, no box hits, and you could do it infinite times. At first the idea was just to flop until the 50s, then start using weapons. Then, players figured they'd do it to the 60s, the 70s. By 2019 and beyond, the meta was to flop for the first 25 hours of the game. 
but since PhD actually deals very little damage, this will only get you to about round 77. By then, based on the time balancing, you'd have to start picking up the pace if you wanted to beat the record before reset, when the game overflows on entities and restarts itself. In Call of the Dead's case, this happened at about 77 hours. So, in the late 70s or early 80s, you would have to start trading in your guns over and over if you wanted to kill a significant amount of zombies. After 2020, the record plateaued even harder in the low 90s, reaching 92 by the end of that year by UMESCO, and only going up one round to 93 by Tails Can Fly in December 2023. That is, until this year, when players accidentally figured out a way to completely break the map. It all started when a player named Atmos Cube, also known as Hermetrix, started experimenting with ways to reach Call of the Dead's theoretical max round of 96. He wanted to implement more optimizations to speed up early rounds and VR11 usage, and during his tests, he noticed that killing a zombie with the VR11 behind a window would sometimes get the other zombies in that window stuck and have them bleed out. To mess around with this more, he decided to block every window in a zone by doing this, expecting some zombies to bleed out similarly to what had been happening. Instead, he discovered something way more bizarre. Behind the window, all the zombies started bleeding out and dying. Actually dying, not just respawning. Hermetrix decided to take advantage of this. He realized he didn't even need to block the window with VR11 kills. He could just constantly repair the boards on it and it would have the same effect. On January 12th, he uploaded a video showcasing him holding the window next to the PhD perk machine, letting the zombies bleed out behind it, and shooting any zombies that trickled in from adjacent windows with the VR11. This worked for a while, but he could only do it at the beginning of rounds. Once he ran out of VR11 ammo and had to trade, he had to leave the area to hit the box. That meant, once the trade was over, he couldn't get all the zombies to respawn back behind that one window again until the next round started, because he couldn't kill them all at the same time. For this reason, Hermetrix figured you could only use this method to gain a couple rounds on the record, at first. Immediately, other high round players shared the video and began theorizing on how round 100 might be possible with this method. Some community members were already coming up with ways to improve on Hermetrix's idea. Seasoned Black Ops 1 veteran Furret Can Walk pointed out how you actually could respawn all the zombies at the same time on Call of the Dead by manipulating the respawn mechanic in the game. To explain how this works, we're going to have to dive into the inner workings of the game for a bit, so stay with with me here and start thinking like a Treyarch developer. You see, Black Ops Zombies has a lot of fail-safes hard-coded into the game to keep the zombies running smoothly, to keep the round progression going, and to maintain a challenging experience for the player. One of these features is the despawn mechanic, the idea that if you get too far away from a zombie, it'll respawn closer to you. A player named the MC Zombie Slayer recently discovered that, in Black Ops 1, this works in a very specific way. Every 10 seconds, starting from the beginning of the match, the game will check to make sure all the undamaged zombies on the map are close enough to the players. As a regular but not constant device to make sure all newly spawned zombies are are still in immediate danger to you. If a zombie is too far away, it'll delete that zombie and make it come out of a nearby window instead. However, it seems Treyarch devs didn't want players to actually see zombies being deleted off the map. So there's another check, the line of sight check. But they got lazy. As long as you are looking at a zombie or a horde of zombies, no matter how far away they are, even if it's through a wall, they will not despawn even when that 10 second timer hits. They will only despawn when you're looking away when the 10 seconds are up, as long as they're undamaged. Now, start thinking like a zombies player, along the lines of, how can I abuse the hell out of this mechanic to my advantage? Well, you'd need a way to get away from all the zombies very fast while still being able to look in their direction until you get to a point where you want them all to respawn. And for it realized that Call of the Dead actually had just the feature for this, the flinger. The flinger is a jump pad on the boat that was clearly meant as a fast travel mechanic, as it doesn't kill zombies, it just makes them respawn. 
but you can use it to cover the distance needed to trigger the despawn mechanic, keep looking back at them whenever your timer hits a number that ends in zero to keep them on the other side of the map, and then when you're back at the window you want to hold, turn around and they will all respawn. If you're in a good spawn zone, most of them will respawn behind one or two windows. This was a huge optimization, because it meant that you could use Hermetrix's strategy whenever you wanted to. After you completed a VR11 trade for more ammo, just do this and you'd be able to get all the zombies back behind the window to start bleeding out again. And even if some or all of the zombies are damaged, you can use the flinger to throw them and respawn them on the boat, and then do this to get them to respawn where you want. But we still haven't covered why the bleed out strategy works in the first place. Why are some zombies just killing themselves? Well, Ferret and a Polish player named Zio, who are both well-versed programmers, looked into the game's code and found out. Hold your breath because we're going to have to go on another deep dive to understand why this works. Picture this, it's 2010. You're sitting behind your desk at Treyarch Studios. Your boss just told you that you need to implement a failsafe in case a zombie gets stuck and can't reach the player. What do you do? I'll tell you what you did. There's a check hard-coded in to see if a zombie hasn't moved much in the last 30 seconds, implying that it's stuck somewhere. However, there's another check within this one, to see if the zombie has ever actually targeted the player. This would mean the zombie has either swung at the player to attack them, or chased the player through the map. If neither of these things is true, due to what seems to be a coding oversight, the game will just kill the zombie instead of trying to respawn it. So, thinking as a player again, you need a way to force this to happen. Well, it's actually easier than you might think. If you find a spawn zone on the map where the zombies can only come out of two to three windows at a time, that means if all the zombies are respawning at once, you probably have at least 10 or so zombies coming out of one window, depending on randomization and how many spawn points are in each. Say you keep on boarding this window over and over again, going back and forth to the barrier so you keep it boarded, but you don't get hit enough to go down. Only three zombies can attack the barrier at a time. Since they're swinging at you through the window, they're already targeting you. The bleed out mechanic won't affect them. But what are the rest of the zombies behind the window doing? Standing there, waiting patiently for their turn to come out. But they can't swing at you or chase after you. They're waiting for those first three zombies to tear the barrier down, which those three zombies can't do because you keep rebuilding it. So those standing zombies keep triggering the bleed out failsafe every 30 seconds, and the game keeps killing them off. Then more zombies will spawn, but most of them will get stuck standing there too. And the cycle just continues. So, you could say, after all these years, we've passed the point of players killing zombies, traps killing zombies, allies killing zombies. We've now reached the point where the zombies are just killing themselves. So, now players knew why the bleed out strategy worked, and how to use it whenever they wanted. Now, it was time to figure out how to optimize it. And it didn't take long. With all the traction the strategy was getting, within two days of Hermetrix's original upload, a player named Elvis found an even better spot to do the bleed out strategy. While Hermetrix had originally been using the lighthouse office, Elvis used the cave area just down the rocky path from him. This spot was way more efficient. Why? Well, think about it like this. There's no place on Call of the Dead where the zombies will only spawn out of one window. So no matter how you do this strategy, you'll always have a few zombies attacking you from the front. What you want is to deal with the least amount of zombies attacking this way though. In Cave, as long as you leave the rowboat debris from spawn closed, the only other zombies will come from two ceiling spawners and another window up the stairs. However, the funny thing is, you never actually have to worry about that other window in this spot. Why is that? Well, the humanized zombies from the ceiling spawns will run past that window to get to the closest body of water, which is at spawn. The zombies coming out of that window will chase after them until they are so far away from the player that the despawn mechanic can activate. Then, since those zombies are undamaged, all the player has to do is look away from them, and they'll either respawn in that same window and do the same thing, or they'll respawn in the cave window and die by bleeding out. Either way, they don't pose a threat. 
Because of this, and because ceiling spawners have about a 20 second animation and zombies come out one at a time, this backs up a ton of zombies at the cave window, giving you a lot of stuck zombies to bleed out. You'll still have to shoot occasionally, but if you conserve your ammo by shooting one loose zombie and letting the rest chase his human form away, you can stall long enough to bleed over a hundred zombies at the window before you eventually run out of ammo and have to trade. In case you're still confused as to why this is such a good thing, Take as an example this video of Hermetrix getting 156 kills before trading his VR-11. Now, with the old strategy of one zombie per one VR-11 shot, this many kills would have taken four full VR-11s and part of a fifth. That's a lot of time not only wasted hitting the box, but a lot more progress toward box error, potentially over 100 hits depending on your luck. But Hermetrix manages to kill 120 of the zombies here just by bleeding them out, saving boatloads of time. Do this over and over again and box error becomes a thing of the past, because you can pace yourself to hit reset before you ever reach 3700 box hits. The first solo reset ever on Call of the Dead was finally in sight. More importantly, the first 100. The community just needed someone to do it. Luckily, the perfect person was rising to the top of the ranks on the map. This was a player named Prompt. Prompt had started playing Call of the Dead in late 2023 using the old strategy, and trying to incorporate new optimizations like her metrics had been. Before the new strategy was even discovered, he'd achieved an 83 and an 88, along with a handful of other attempts. After the strategy was discovered though was when Prompt's grind really started. On January 23rd, barely more than a week since the strategy had come out, Prompt got a game going and became the first person to put the strategy into practice in a real game. However, this attempt would end two days later on 79 due to a respawner of unknown origin while trading. The fuck did he come from, dude? What the fuck did he come from? Where? Where the fuck did he come from? Prompt didn't have much luck getting a game going for almost a month after this. Then he had one of his biggest games ever, a 90, that ended in an even bigger tragedy on February 17th. He Holy! Oh! No! No! That's no point. Uh -oh. I'm cooked here. It's over. Uh, open I'm cooked. The door. Open the boat. I'm cooked. It's over. At the end of the month, he restarted again, only to die to a crossbow fail on 85. Done. It seemed at this point that Call of the Dead was putting up more of a fight than players could handle, but no one else could come even close to Prompt's games. The closest competition was from the MC Zombie Slayer, who had several games into the 70s, but even his motivation seemed to be fizzling out. But just when it looked like Call of the Dead was about to freeze over again, there was a breakthrough. On March 29th, 2024, Prompt started up another attempt like any other. He got his setup of Raygun and Matrix dolls out of the first box, then packed Mustang and Sally in the M16 and camped in Lighthouse until 55, because it has the fastest spawns on the map. At 55, he finally began running out of ammo and had to leave and start flopping to force drops. He bounced back and forth between flopping on the beach and using the Wonderwaff in Lighthouse until 68. At this point, he finally went back to the mystery box and hit for the M72 Law and Scavenger for more explosive damage and started trading these when necessary. Prompt could afford to be a lot more liberal with early box hits than the previous world record holder, Tails, who didn't hit the box again after setup until 77. This was because Prompt knew that with the new strategy he was about to use, he wasn't going to have as many box hits per round. On 70, Prompt got the VR-11 and the Pack-a-Punched crossbow for safety and started putting the bleed-out strategy to work. Still, since the rounds were relatively low, whenever he got an explosive weapon like the Law, Ray Gun, or Scavenger out of the box during trades, he would go down to the beach and use it, then continue trading until he got that or the VR-11 back. Whenever he got the WAF drop from killing George every other round, he'd go into the lighthouse and use that. He took his first down on 74, 
after being tricked into thinking the round was over. He almost quit out of frustration too. A down 12 hours into a 77 hour game is definitely not promising, but Prompt was already fed up with how long it had taken him to get this game started, so he decided to play it out, and it was a good thing he did. Prompt locked in and kept grinding out the rounds into the 80s and beyond. He finally stopped using explosive weapons on 88 because they were becoming slower than using the VR-11. He passed his personal best of 90 with no problems, and then swiped the record of 93, just barely managing to survive the round without going down. When the round changed over to 94, he officially had the record, but his job wasn't done yet. His real goal was the first 100, so he kept the momentum going. It didn't take long, since Prompt was averaging over 12 hours of gameplay a day. And on April 2nd, after only 4 days in game and 62 hours of gameplay, Prompt achieved the first solo round 100 ever on Call of the Dead. This was monumental. For the map, for the game, in terms of strategies being pushed and new innovations being discovered. And Prompt wasn't even done. He still had about 16 hours left before reset, and about a thousand box hits before error. So he kept pushing the map to its limits. Unfortunately, his luck started going downhill after 100. The average amount of hits it took to get the VR-11 back climbed up from about 20 to 22. Prompt also took his second down of the game on 102. By the time he reached 105, Prompt realized that he wasn't going to have enough time to complete the round. Round 104 alone had taken 3 hours and 4 minutes, and he had less than that amount of time before reset. But he still wanted to achieve that first official solo reset. First of oh, reset. So he would have to waste about an hour and a half in game, waiting around for the entities to overflow. And he just started messing around on the map, buying doors and guns and trading for fun. Unfortunately, he messed around a little too much and died. Wait, no, no. <laughs> Oh my fucking god, dude. However, the way that Black Ops 1 works is that the reset timer won't refresh until you actually relaunch the map. When the match restarted, the reset timer was still going. So Prompt did actually achieve the first solo reset ever on Call of the Dead, on round 13. So here's the question I know you all are wondering about now. Can this record be beaten? The answer is yes. Actually, Prompt probably would have gotten at least a 106 in this game had his box luck not turned bad after 100. He predicts that with the perfect game on this strategy, a player could go as high as 108 or 109. One optimization he pointed out to me is actually not having speed cola. Having that one perk is actually bad for the strategy. That seems weird, wouldn't you want to reload faster? Yes, but Speed Cola has another feature you might not know about. At least, it wants you to think it does. For a while, players used to think it would help you rebuild barriers faster too, but that's not true. It just speeds up the animation of rebuilding the barrier. This can cause the zombies to jump through what may look like a rebuilt barrier, and this happened several times in Prompt's game, losing him VR11 shots and time. It could take hours for a player to restart at the beginning of a game for every perk except Speed Cola, but we may see that level of dedication in the future with the strategy. Because there's another problem. In the optimizations over the years of nearly every other strategy in COD Zombies, players have consistently found ways to kill zombies faster. But with this strategy, there really isn't a way to kill them faster, because you have to wait for that hard-coded 30-second bleed-out timer. So if the community wants to optimize this strategy further, aside from things such as no speed cola restarts, they'll have to figure out faster ways of trading or killing in the early rounds, when the speed is more under player control. The other topic of discussion is the strategy itself. Some players actually don't like the strategy at all, claiming that it's boring and exploitative to progress rounds by abusing the system like this. Even Prompt agreed when I talked to him about this game that this is far from the most fun strategy in Zombies. Sure, the basic idea is the same as it always was, 
you're just killing more zombies before having to trade now, so higher and more iconic rounds are possible. But was it worth it for how the map has now changed? Have we created a monster with this new strategy? That remains to be seen. But one thing I know we will see more of is players coming together and collaborating on new discoveries that will push maps beyond what anyone thought possible for years. If nothing else, I think Call of the Dead's new 100 is the perfect example of this. If you'd like to learn more about Call of the Dead, this game, or the players who made it happen, I'm going to leave a bunch of links down in the description, so check those out. Other than that, I'm Wonderful, and this has been my experience of learning how Call of the Dead works now. Thanks for watching.